Welcome to a 111 Ryder Cup Trail. Today we're on the tail end of this pour. They're finishing up with the porches on the back of the house. We're waiting on another couple yards for the porches on the front of the house. One of the things that's really important in uh, concrete is the slump of concrete. It refers to the consistency of fresh concrete before it sets. The higher the slump, the more fluid the concrete is. It's a fairly confusing term for a complex sounding process but really it's quite simple. When we're looking at slump, we're looking at temperatures and we're looking at evaporation. And today it's a cooler day, so we're gonna be going with a lower slump. On a super hot day, we're gonna run like a six slump. So today we're running a three slump because we've got a much cooler morning. We're gonna put a bunch of uh, construction photography inspection photos on the beams and the footings. So all the footings on 111 Ryder Cup Trail are 24 inches deep on my perimeter beams. There are 18 cross beams all throughout this slab. That makes for a much more stronger slab. A lot of times when we pour slabs, homeowners feel like they look small. So today I want you to get a perspective of what a slab of 4,038 looks like. The heated and cooled on the first floor on this house is gonna be 2,978. The garage is real close to 600 square feet. The front porch is 179. The rear covered porch is 296. And the total square footage under roof is 4,038. Right now we're finishing up this pour. Um, we're using the pump truck currently to finish up about another quarter yard right here on the front right hand side of the porch. One of the things that is important with the pump truck is that you have an even pour but what that allows for is when we come back and do our flooring, it really requires a lot less prep for our highs and our lows. One of the things you also need to look at is look at the ripples in the concrete right now. It still looks very wet and it still looks very malleable for them to come back and then use their finished machine and spin on it. So a lot of times if you get the slump wrong on the concrete and you don't use a pump truck, what'll happen is two things. You won't have an even pour, and then by the time they come back to spin the concrete, you're not gonna be able to get that level surface. There's a slab being poured right down the street right now today. It's gonna be a spec home, and they're not using a pump truck. It costs about $2,000 more, but what it helps is, is get an even pour throughout the slab. And one of the things that you can look for in a slab is your ups and downs. You can really see it after it rains and you'll really notice it when you'll see highs and lows and water spots on a slab that they haven't used a pump truck on. One of the things that's really important in construction is to get your grading and your dirt work correct before you pour concrete. As you can see on the front left hand side of the house, you've got a nice fall from left to right. If you're a homeowner and you're coming in and you're buying a house and you wanna know how your water is gonna turn around your house, that's one of the most important things you can do because coming back because the dirt works way too low and having to put French drains in or you start trying to put uh, swells in to curve your drainage. This is something that really protects the homeowner's asset and it helps the homeowner from a longevity of the price point that they're paying for the house. And a lot of times the homeowners think, you forgot about my garage. We set it up, we run our two by six brick ledge on each side and then we actually come in by hand and then we cut this garage slope. So when we put your garage door down, if there's water that hits this garage door, it falls down and then it comes towards the grading of the home. We just got done pouring the concrete. So we're really going into the finishing stage and this is gonna happen really quick. So the first thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna float the surface of the concrete, which they've done on most of this slab. The second thing they're about to do is edge the slab, which they're almost done doing and they're gonna work in grooving the joints and they're gonna be troweling the surface. One of the things homeowners wanna know is, when can I walk on the slab after you pour? That's all dependent upon temperature and the slump of concrete you use. Typically, it can take anywhere on a really hot summer day for about 20 minutes, or it can take up to five hours to walk back on the slab. And it's all depending on the temperature, humidity, and how hard the wind is blowing to determine those times. So one of the things that's really important to me is coming in, whether I'm in the city limits or I'm outside in the country, 
and doing the slab like I'm in the city. One of the things we're doing here is we're putting in all of our footings at 24 inches. We're putting in 18 inch beams. We've got a secondary inspection company that comes in and does photography, and then they come in and bring an independent inspector. I bind all that data and information up, and then we send it to Structure Scan, who gives you a 10 year warranty on this slab after we get all of our inspections done. So one of the things you can look over and see is a three inch pipe that's gonna be going from the mid wall into the island. And I always oversize that because a homeowner might wanna run extra power to their island. They might want uh, four plugs instead of two plugs. We've got plenty of room for our water to be chased through. And then I've got a separate electrical. And this house is available to customize today if you give us a call.